Hello, I'm Light Dragon 348 and in this video I will be showing you how to make a smooth line follow for your LEGO Mindstorms. Now this can be used in either a competition or just at home for fun. Now if you're planning to use this in a competition, I will be explaining you how to make it as it is important to know when you attend the competition. So this is just a quick overview of how the program looks like as you can see. But right now, I'm just going to delete that. And now, I'll go over it step by step so you can learn. Now, first thing you want to do is make sure you're in complete palette. Right down here. Bring You bring out a loop bar. So, that's the first step. Bring out a loop. The next thing you do, once you have the loop, you go to sensor, which is this yellow square. And you take out a light sensor. and you place it in the loop. Now I'm sorry my computer's kinda slow so this may be happening a while I just hope you can be a bit patient. So after you take out the light sensor you go to data and you take out a matte block and you place it after the light sensor. Now after you do this let me just explain what the purposes are. This light sensor will tell the robot this is what to do with the light level. So you'd say this is the light level and then the mat block will tell you what to do with it. So light level, what to do with it. So with the mat block, in the place that says operation, you change it to division, leave number A as zero, but make number B 20. After you do that, you take this intensity level down here and you drag it to number A. Now, as I said before, we left number A as zero. The reason for that is number A will be the intensity level of the light. So basically what you told the robot to do was take the light level and then divide it by 20. Light level divided by 20. Now after this, you go to flow, take out a switch and place it after the mat block. After this, you change it to from sensor to value, from logic in type to number, then you make it not be flat view. So it'll be like this. After this, you see you have two variables. We need to have five variables. Now here's why you need five variables. The thing is, what you're telling the robot to do is you're telling the robot what to do for five different cases of the light. What this means is you'll tell the robot what to do when the light sensor is far away to the right of the line. Then you'll tell the robot what to do when it's just to the right of the line. Then you'll tell it what to do when it's on the line. Then when it's just to the left of the line. And then what to do when it's on the far left of the line. By giving it these five different cases, it will be able to follow the line in a smooth way. Because in the basic program, it just had two cases went on the line and off the line. Now it has five. So to get five, to do half five cases, you need five variables. We have two. So to add three more, down here, you just click the plus button three more times. Add a new condition. After you do this, you take this result bar, and then like before, you drag it, over here now this is the output place of this so basically you told the robot just now take the light level divide by 20 and depending on the result do one of these five variables so what this is what you do in each variable first take an action block now, let me just note that what you do in one variable, you basically do the same thing in all the variables except with one little differences. One little different. I'll be going to that. So, you take out two action motors. And you place it right after each one after each other. Now, you change the motors to the one on the right to C, the one on the left 
to be Now you do this part in all the variables. Take two action motors and then you place and you place each two of those in one variable. So this variable will have two action motors, this variable will this one, this one, and this one. After you do that, you change you change the variables to port B for the left one and port C for the right one. That is going to be the same thing. The only thing that's going to be different is the power numbers. Let me explain why. Let's say the robot is far to the right. If it, the robot is far to the right, you want the motor to the right to have more power so that the robot can slowly turn to the right and back onto the line. So in this case, the variable 1, you're telling the robot what to do when it's on the far right of the line. In this case, port C will have to have greater power. So the power numbers is port B will be 10 and port C will be 50. After you do that, you have completed the first variable in which port C is greater because it's far to the right, so port C has to be greater for it to turn. In the second variable, you do the same thing in which you take out two variables, B, C, and now this time, the this variable is for when the light sensor is just to the right of the line, but not completely on the line. So it's kind of on the right edge of the line. In this case, since it's closer to the line, the power numbers are going to be closer to each other. So instead of 10, 50, it's going to be 20 and 40. So let's make port B, 20, and port C, 40. After you do that, for the third variable, you're going to be telling the robot what to do when it's on the line. Now, when it's on the line, you want the power numbers to be the same. So you bring out two action motors, B and C, and this time, the power numbers are for both of them are going to be 50, 50, 50. So this is when it's on the line. For the fourth variable, this is when it's on the left edge of the line. What you do for that is, you're doing the same thing as when, if, when it was on the right edge of the line. But instead of it being 20-40, it's going to be 40-20, which is the opposite. Now this will apply for the last one, in which the first one was 10-50, so the last one will be 50-10. I'm just knowing saying this so because I personally think it makes it easier to memorize the power numbers if you think of it like that. So now let's write 40, 20. Now for the last variable, as I said before, it's going to be 50, 10. So let's just bring out two action motor. B and C, and now it's going to be 50 and 10, and that is how it should look like. So let's just go over the entire thing again. Light level, divides it by 20, then depending on the result, we'll do one of these five variables. So first variable, the power number should be 1050. Then 20, 40. Third variable, 50, 50. 40, 20. The last variable is 50, 10. And that is how the proportional or smooth light, lights follow should look like in the program. Now, after you download this onto your NXT, what you want to do is calibrate your light sensor so it knows the light, what the light levels are. Now, this is how you calibrate it. Go online and look up, I'll just look it up again, Calibration Program for Lego Mindstorms. So you look it up. Now after you look it up, you click the part that says NXT Line Follower-NXT Programs. 
after you do this, skip the first part. This is gives you a design on how to build a light sensor for a line follower for a robot. After this, go all the way down, literally at the end. Now go to the part that says how to calibrate the light sensor. Here it will give instructions on what it means to calibrate it, but this basically this is what it means. First, you would click on this to download the program. Once the program is downloaded, what you do is it will be in your NXT brick, so then you click the program on it. What you do is when you click it, you place the light sensor over the black line or the line it's following, then click enter so the robot will know what the light level for that line for the line is. Then you take the light then you put the light sensor on the white line and click enter again so the robot knows what the light level for the white line or the or the area around it is. And then you put it on the boundary of the line and click enter so it knows what the light level for that boundary is. The reason why you need to calibrate it is because so the robot knows what the light level is for when it's on the line, off the line, and the boundary. Because if it doesn't know it, then the program won't work and the robot will just spin around in circles. It's also important because in different places, different areas can be affecting your can affect the light level. For example, at the competitions, there might be lights above the table which might make it brighter. So because of that, it's always important to calibrate it. So there are more instructions here if you didn't get that. So basically, you download and then put over a black, white, and then boundary. Click enter for all of them so it knows the light level. And then after you do that, then you can do the smooth line follow program. Now, I should note that you should do the calibration before the light smooth line follow program or else it's a waste. So that is how you make a smooth line follow and that is how you calibrate it. So the calibration program here is downloaded. And now this is just another how an overview of how it should look like. It should look somewhat like this. So that is it. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.